about to explode. Come with me, uh, get low. For Honor is a bizarre thing. It's a AAA game that's based on one idea, and while it's not entirely new, it's certainly the biggest scale that it's ever been tried on. And no, it isn't just the Viking Knight Samurai battle thing either. Before I go further, it's worth me pointing out this analysis is based entirely on the beta of the game, and not the full version out tomorrow. At the same time, it's a beta for a game that's out tomorrow, so I don't think much will change. This is just focused on the multiplayer aspect of the game. For Honor is meant to have a single player mode, and I'm truly very interested in trying that. But Forerunner is a rare thing in AAA games. Its focus is on its duel mechanic. Despite everything happening in the game, everything comes down to a rock, paper, scissors aspect of play. Or at least, rock, paper, scissors if you could change your mind at the last second to counter an attack. The whole idea is left, right, and up being defense and attack options. If you defend up when someone is attacking up, you'll block a move. It's a very exciting idea. For as long as I've been playing games, melee combat with swords has been underwhelming. If they aren't based on the Arkham system anyways. In first person especially, melee combat feels like flailing at an opponent hoping something will hit. There's only minimal strategy here, only deciding when and when not to flail like a madman. See Skyrim and Dying Light for example. For Honor is unique because it offers a new system, a better more engrossing system. Everyone's been stuck on the Arkham mechanics for so long, this is a breath of fresh air. I genuinely do believe that For Honor could be what Arkham Asylum was for melee combat back in 09. It's smart, requiring your player to be engaged past just pressing Y to counter an incoming move. However, there is a caveat to this gameplay and how Forerunner displays it that's complicated. I myself haven't even decided if it's good or not, but it's a bit of design that's either immersive or game-breaking depending on what side of the coin you're on. The dual mechanic is excellent. As a game idea, especially a game literally built around it, it's strong. In one-on-one -on -one encounters, it's unmatched right now in AAA games. That's why I believe dual mode to be the strongest in the game, but it's very clear that's not meant to be the main focus of the title. Deathmatch and Dominion are meant to be that, or at least I believe so due to the spectacle and the idea of bigger is better. Where the most complications do rise is in Dominion, and I do feel like that is meant to be the main mode of the game. I can't prove that, but put it this way. If the game was an eSport, god forbid, I imagine serious play would be in this mode. Also, it was the main mode shown off at E3 when the game debuted. And here we get to the debate. Dominion absolutely sullies the duel mechanic, which, again, is what the whole game's based upon. It has creeps, like in MOBAs, but those really only matter for the B point on any map. Which is a strange choice regardless, as creeps are always meant to be contesting multiple points. It's an 8 player mode, 4v4, with these B point creeps involved. I love this because of the big battle feel that comes with it, but it kind of falls apart a little while fighting other players. When you face another warrior on the battleground, that's all great and dandy, but the mode is chaos meaning players run around trying to capture point and kill creeps, and even though it's 4v4, it's not 4 1v1 encounters. Instead, what often happens is you'll be locked in a great 1v1 duel, and then another member of the other team will run up around and stab you in the back. The game to its credit has a revenge system, which is much easier to build when you're outnumbered. And it's easy to say it feels awesome taking on multiple players at once, but then the actual main mechanic usually goes out the window. Defending in an unfair fight, which usually happens because a member of your team has died, never once feels as good as one-on-one -on -one duels. Again, you certainly feel powerful if you find yourself surviving for a while in 2v1, but I find myself doing it and not feeling I've accomplished anything, rather the game helped me out because I was outnumbered. Now, immersion-wise, this makes sense. You wouldn't take a fencer to a battlefield 100% of the time. They might be amazing at one-on-one -on -one combat, but with no wider awareness, they could easily be cut down from another warrior while looking at their main target. That's why I feel somewhat conflicted about this. Battleground awareness should be a part of any warrior's success. However, For Honor's built on this one mechanic, the dual mechanic. And again, that's something I applaud. It's rare big games are really about one fine-tuned game idea. However, when your mechanic is focused on precision, 
and then in multiple modes, the mode you're likely positioning as the main modes that thrive on chaos, it completely undersells the power of the mechanic. And when your game is focused on that mechanic, so centrally, that's a problem. I love what Forerunner is doing, but the idea of precision being disrupted by busyness undersells it. It just means I feel like I'm threading a needle in a hurricane.